Happy Friday everyone, hope you are having a great time at the conference. My name is Parul Singh and I work as a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Today I am introducing our sustainability in computing stack and we will see how you can monitor energy consumption and build energy efficient system the cloud native way. The agenda is simple. I will start by briefing the existing state of affairs in terms of energy and sustainability in computing. Then I'm going to introduce a sustainability stack, which comprises of three projects as of now, Kepler, the Kepler model server and Peaks, which is a scheduler. And at last I'll have a demo. Yeah, obviously we all love demos, so I'll have a demo at the end. According to Gartner in 2021, um, an ACM technology brief estimated that the information and communication technologies sector or the ICT sector contributed between 1.8% and 3.9% of global carbon emission. And to give you a context, that is more than the global carbon emission of Italy and Germany combined. So this haunts us to ask questions like, how can we minimize the energy consumption of computing, be it on cloud or on premise, where you may or may not have access to the devices in case uh, you want to install some specific hardware components to measure energy consumption. So we need to come out with a way to measure energy consumption directly and to measure energy consumption of individual and specific workloads and to attribute power on shared resources to processes, containers or pods. So let's talk about the energy measurement methodology and what seems to be idle and the reality of how things work at the kernel level. So the first target that we have is the frequency. And you would think uh, I can just measure frequency by monitoring each circuit. But that is not possible because in reality, Linux kernel CPU frequency governor dynamically changes frequency for saving energy and or for performance. So the solution is to reuse average frequency to approximate. The second target, capacitance, uh, and you could you would be thinking that, oh, to measure capacitance, I can just monitor the number of circuits powered on. But again, in reality, there is no such way to do it on a CPU. And uh, to fix it, we use the number of CPU instructions to approximate. And at last, the execution time which is just the duration of circuits state powered on. But you cannot monitor uh, the duration because again, in reality, there's no such way on the CPU. So the solution is to use CPU cycles to approximate. So our methodology is based on the principle that CPU usage is directly proportional to CPU power consumption. And we did not make this up. There is a big research community that have published many white papers, uh, which I put in the reference as the last, on, on her attributing CPU usage to power consumption. Feel free to dig uh, into those white paper uh, if you want to. So what we're saying is you can use software counters to measure power consumption of hardware resources. and uh, for example, in this diagram, let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster that has two workloads running. Each workload has one pod. The first pod has one container and it is consuming 10% of CPU. That means it attributed to 10% of CPU power consumption. And the second workload, which also has one pod, but it has five containers and it used 50% of CPU. That means it attributed to 50% of CPU uh, power consumption. So essentially power consumption is attributed to the resource usage by processes, containers and pods. So Let's see the projects that we have in our sustainability stack. The first is Kepler. Um, the first project is Kepler that reports energy consumption of various hardware resources. The second project is Kepler model server that trains regression model for prediction of energy consumption of uh, the workload. And at last we have Peaks, which is 
a kind of a scheduler that takes information from both Kepler and Kepler model server to schedule workloads on the nodes that best fit the criteria. Okay, um, now we have, uh, we will be seeing the project Kepler, which is uh, a short form for Kubernetes based efficient power level exporter, quite a complicated name. Um, Kepler uses software counters to measure power consumption by hardware resources and exports them as Prometheus metrics. Basically, the uh, one of the main goal of Kepler is to measure per pod energy consumption. Um, so Kepler, in short, provides the capa capability to report energy consumption of different hardware resources like CPU, GPU, RAM, and it supports both bare metal as well as clouds. And it uses cloud native stack like Prometheus, Metrix Exporter, Grafana uh, to render these information uh, into a very user friendly dashboard. Kepler is also very lightweight because it uses eBPF uh, to minimize its own computational energy you do not want a program that is calculating your power consumption of your cluster to be very power intrinsic. You want it to have a bare minimum footprint. So that's why uh, we have used eBPF to uh, get to gather or collect these information. And at last, it uses machine learning models to estimate uh, power consumption. The model server trains model tuned to the software stats with respect to power consumption. And again, uh, we have used, we followed or studied various uh, white papers, which, uh, which have attached in the references again that supports this uh, this approach. So uh, let's look into the architecture of Kepler and here we have a layered architecture so we'll start uh, we'll do a bottom to top approach we'll start with the bottommost layer or the data collection layer and Kepler collects data based on eBPA programs that attach to Linux kernel trace points and performance counters to collect information such as process ID, C group ID, CPU cycle, CPU time, CPU instruction, cache emissions, this information is pub pushed to the user space as the data aggregation layer in conjunction with other stats from C group, GPU, as well as the hardware monitor. Kepler then exports these stats as Prometheus uh, metrics and the model server uses these information to train models to establish relationship between energy consumption by the pod and the software stats. Now let's see, uh, let's uh, talk about the Kepler model server. One of the core goals of Kepler is single pod energy consumption prediction in a Kubernetes cluster. This prediction can be done by attributing a relationship between performance counters and energy consumption as uh, as I've already explained before. And to be able to do that, we need to provide reliable and accurate machine learning models, which can be used to accurately predict energy consumption of Kubernetes workloads given the performance counters. The Kepler model server is implemented using TensorFlow Keras and Flask. And the main reason of using Keras over other library like SkyKit is because Keras operates more efficiently when it comes to deep neural network. Th next, let's talk about the models within the model server. Currently, Kepler model server implements two linear regression model. The first one is core energy consumption, uh, uh, CPU core energy consumption model. And it is based on features like CPU architecture, current, C current number of CPU cycles, current number of CPU instructions, current CPU time. The second model aims to provide DRAM energy consumption based on features like CPU architecture, current cache emissions, current resident memory. Now that we have 
um, and both these uh, models are based on supervised machine learning. Now that we have talked about the models, let's see how we train the models and how we use them for prediction. Um, in the diagram, uh, uh, you, you can see that there are two nodes and each of the node has power consumption estimate agent. So Kepler exports performance counters um, that comes from these power consumption estimator agent and these est agents are sitting on all the nodes uh, within, uh, within the Kubernetes cluster. The agent exports the node energy metrics and the performance counters to Kepler metrics collector as you can see on uh, the on the top left the Kepler metrics um, exporter then aggregate uh, the Kepler me metrics collector then aggregates these information and exports them as uh, Prometheus metrics the Kepler model server scrapes the metrics and converts the Prometheus uh, metrics into sufficiently large TensorFlow datasets and this dataset is used to train and retrain DRAM and core CPU energy consumption model. Certain metrics like root mean square error and R squared value is used to check if the models are acceptable for Kepler to use and once the models are deemed fit, they are exposed to Kepler for prediction using HTTP endpoints uh, that you can see uh, we have the, we've used temporarily Flask for that. And once the, um, and once the models are available for, uh, at the HTTP endpoints, the Ke um, Kepler uses Kubernetes pod performance counters to then make prediction for energy consumption of individual workloads. Okay, now that we have talked about Kepler, the Kepler model server, let's see uh, the last project in our sustainability stack, which is Peaks or Power Efficiency Aware Kubernetes Scheduler. It, it has a similar workflow like the Kepler model server, where it obtains thermal temperature, cooling and power consumption metrics from Kepler in the same fashion that these metrics are exported by the power consumption estimate agent and collected and aggregated by uh, Kepler metrics collector and then exposed to Prometheus. So Peaks download these metrics from Prometheus. It, uh, uh, as of now, as I talked that we only have two models, which is the DRAM and the core CPU, uh, models, but um, in the future, we, as we are working on Peaks, we are also going to implement more models that uh, that uh, Peaks can use to obtain appropriate power, energy, carbon uh, uh, f from the model server, and it uses these metrics in the scheduler plugging. So as of now. Uh, we are in a very early stage of development of Peaks and we are still conducting a lot of experiments on which metrics is best suited to find uh, uh, the, the node. We are thinking of various trade-offs where uh, we are thinking of energy efficiency versus energy con total energy consumption of the, uh, of the cluster. Uh, another trade-off that we are thinking of is load packing versus spreading so this project is uh, right under con uh, still under work and we are uh, we are just figuring things out but uh, the basic concept is similar to how I've explained before we will have models that will be used for machine learning prediction and the same uh, pipeline that we have set up for Kepler and the metrics exporter will be reused to uh, capture node stats which later be applied by the scheduler plugin to uh, figure out which is the best node to schedule those tasks. So let's get to the demo. I will be showing you how to install Kepler on a Kubernetes cluster. Before you do that, uh, you have to make sure that the operating, operating system provides support for cgroup v2 and it also provides the kernel header that are required by eBPF and obviously kernel that supports eBPF. For the demo setup, I would be using a Microshift cluster. Microshift is a lightweight OpenShift specifically optimized for Edge 
and the reason why I'm using Microsoft for this demo is because it's very simple to start up and you can just use systemd to start and manage Microsoft on an RPM based host. I will also be using the monitoring stack that is provided by the cube Prometheus operator and for dashboard I, I'm using Grafana which is uh, installed by the cube Prometheus operator itself. As you can see I have a Microsoft cluster running. There's nothing else running on this cluster uh, as of now. Next I'm going to install the cube Prometheus operator. Uh, so the with the cube Prometheus operator also deploys Grafana so it's pretty straightforward. So I'm applying the cube Prometheus operator manifest and it will take some time. Okay, as you can see that um, the, the monitoring manifests have been applied and now it's time to install Kepler. So I would be just uh, again installing the Kepler manifest. Okay, so the deployment has been applied um, and it has created a bunch of uh, resources. It is deploying Kepler as a daemon set and it also exposes a service uh, where Kepler can expose the metrics to the Prometheus endpoints. And other than that, uh, it also has a couple of R supporting RBACs um, deployed in the namespace. Okay, now uh, you can see that the Kepler pod is running and I will go back to the monitoring namespace to see the Grafana service and uh, you can see that the Grafana service is running on port 3000 so to see the Grafana dashboard all I have to do is port forward uh, 3000 to my uh, host machine and once that is done you can see the Grafana uh, uh, dashboard and in the first quadrant, uh, you can see that the namespace uh, that I'm observing is monitoring and the pod is Grafana. And uh, the first quadrant gives you the pod current energy consumption, uh, which uh, you can see as the uh, line graph over there. In the fourth quadrant, you have the various pods that are running inside the monitoring namespace and the individual uh, total pod energy consumption. And it is very easy to identify which pods are uh, consuming the most energy. So in the third quadrant, you have the various namespaces running inside the cluster and the total pod energy consumption of each of the namespace uh, under, uh, under the cluster. So now I'm going to run a simple Python app that will use Monte Carlo uh, algorithm to uh, evaluate the value of pi and let's see how uh, what kind of visualization we get from uh, the python app so here is my python app that is running inside the namespace uh, uh, python uh, app over here and the pod is the monte carlo uh, 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 python app pod and you can see that the current energy consumption of this uh, pod is shown in the first quadrant and if you see closely the total in current energy consumption almost uh, overlaps with the core CPU energy consumption and which is quite obvious because this application is very CPU uh, intrinsic so it uses uh, a lot of CPU frequency versus uh, the DRAM energy consumption which is almost negligible and uh, one of the cool things about Grafana is that you can see these visualization in various way. For example, you can also see this as a line graph uh, over a, a time series line graph. That would be all. So thank you so much for watching my presentation. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, happy weekend. Thank you. Bye bye.